So in our previous video, we looked at restriction enzymes and their usefulness in creating recombinant DNA. This next flowchart will be entitled DNA cloning, which is a very cool name, and it's exactly what it means. We're going to be cloning a bunch of DNA, and this is going to be very, very useful in many, many medical and um, uh, biological applications in many labs today. It's a process done over and over and over again. It's a very useful pro process that will utilize both things that we've talked about before, um, including restriction enzymes. So we'll define DNA cl cloning as the following. It's defined as methods, it includes a bunch of methods for preparing methods for preparing well-defined okay well-defined DNA sequences because they're well-defined because they're exact clones in multiple identical copies so many many identical copies now what is the usefulness of this why do we need many copies many identical copies of DNA we're gonna get to that and hopefully you can get, garner a great appreciation for the complexity and the usefulness of something like DNA cloning so the actual methods that we use in DNA cloning utilize our good friend E. coli methods use um, E. coli which is our good bacterial prokaryotic friend why E. coli well, E. coli has large has a large circular chromosome, okay? Um, but this is sort of irrelevant to us in terms of DNA cloning. We don't really care too much about the fact that it has this large circular chromosome. What we really care about is the fact that it has something known as a plasmid. And we've established what plasmids are, but now we're going to really see their usefulness in the sense that plasmids are, just like we stated before, smaller, circular, just like we drew that blue circle in our previous uh, flowchart, DNA molecules. Smaller, circular DNA molecules. Okay, These plasmids are usually going to always replicate, they're sort of independent of that large circular chromosome. This is where most of the genes are. But the plasmids of our, of are of interest to us because they actually replicate separately from the main chromosome. So they have these genes on them that separate um, replicate um, separately from our main chromosome. So they're completely independent of that replication process. And they also contain a very small number of genes relative to that uh, large chromosome over there. These small number of genes are going to be usually non-essential, meaning that there's just going to be genes that are going to be important, but not like you know genes that are going to super be super involved in the life processes of E. coli. So they're usually non-essential, and they actually um, may be used um, depending on their environment. Okay, may be used depending DEP for depending on the environment present. So let's say the environment is lacking a certain food. This gene might have the necessary genes. This um, plasmid might have the necessary genes to metabolize other sources besides the food that's lacking in the environment. Very basic example. End all be all, E. coli plasmids, this is going to be of great, great use to us. We're going to be able to manipulate these plasmids by utilizing the actual cloning methods that I'm going to be speaking about now. So let's look at the actual cloning method. How does this happen? So it's going to actually utilize a lot, a lot of the same um, ideas that we did in restriction enzymes. And it's going to really click, I think. So in order to clone DNA, you have to first um, do the following. You have to first obtain an isolated plasmid. Okay, So you need that plasmid from E. coli. So obtain isolated plasmid. This is not hard. Okay, you can very easily um, section out this plasmid. You can sieve it out. That's a better word, let's say, based off of our DNA technology lecture. Once you've got that isolated plasmid, you're going to do the following. And we've sort of touched upon this already. You're going to cut the plasmid with um, some known restriction enzymes. So we'll say cut plasmid with RE, with restriction enzyme. So once you've done that, let's say you cut it with Hindi 3, you know exactly what two pieces of the plasmid are going to be there. You're going to know that there's going to be one regular piece of the plasmid. Let's say, let's continue our uh, idea. So this is our isolated plasmid. And we're going to turn it into this. And we're going to turn it into that piece right here. Sticky end here, sticky end here. This is a short segment. Remember, that's what restriction enzymes do. This is a larger 
plasmid right here, but it's missing that short segment. That missing short segment is very, very important. There's going to be something that's going to be inserted there. We're going to talk about that. So we cut the plasmid with our restriction enzyme. How about we do the same thing with our foreign DNA? Our, imagine the foreign DNA as the DNA that we want to clone. Imagine the foreign DNA is a gene that will give us something very important like insulin. Because people need to inject themselves with insulin. That's a protein. How are you going to make tons of insulin without having to, in, to you know, remove it from an animal or remove it from a human body? You're going to isolate DNA and you're going to actually clone it. This is a very important process. And so, just like I stated before, we're going to cut our foreign DNA, aka our DNA that we want to clone, this is absolutely amazing. Cut foreign DNA with the same restriction enzymes. Let's say we cut that also with HINDI3, just like we did here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut, um, let's say this is our DNA molecule, okay? It's nice and it's crazy right now, okay? So this is our DNA molecule, and we're just going to cut it with HINDI3, and it's going to end up with a short fragment like this, and it's also going to have, um, let's say, uh, let me do that again. Let's take this, let's make it a little simpler, okay? This is our DNA molecule. I just want this piece right here. This is the gene right over here where my mouse is that gives me insulin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out that piece and I'm going to have, um, let's say, this piece is going to be cut out and we're going to have this molecule right here so it's a little bit shorter and that short piece right over here is going to be our insulin. This is of interest so I'm going to bold this out. So this is gone and now we end up with two pieces because Hindi 3 cuts over here, let's say, Let's imagine this part right here. Cuts over here. This is our enzyme. This is this is our gene of interest. So we cut foreign DNA with HINDI3, just like we did for step two. And now we're going to eventually have, hopefully, H bonding. We want H bonding. We want these two things to combine together. H bonding between our plasmid and our foreign DNA. Plasmid plus DNA. Hopefully that will give us a structure similar to what we've already established, much like this. So we have our bacterial plasmid, and now we have our insulin gene, let's say, right over here inside the bacterial plasmid. Now what do we do in step four? So let's do step four. Step four is to, of course, join them together via ly ligase. Okay, we know why that's important. So we join together, this joining together that I just did, that was done via ligase. Okay, so we throw some ligase in this tube as well. Join together via ligase, and now we finally have officially um, recombinant DNA. This is recombinant DNA right over here. This is officially our DNA once you add ligase to make sure that they are smooth, circular, uh, combined together. And finally, in step five, this is a critical step that we'll finish this video on, is transformation. We've heard of this term before, especially in our DNA lecture, where we looked at transformation principles established uh, by Fred Griffith. But let's see what transformation is. What we're going to do right now is we're going to specifically transform, so we'll put this in quotes, uh, I'm going to transform, remember that's a thing that you can do as a scientist, transform specifically the bacterial cell. Meaning that I'm going to take this bacterial cell, okay, this E. coli let's say, and I'm going to reinsert this recombinant DNA. So we're going to say reinsert that plasmid. But because you're reinserting that plasmid, it's no longer a plasmid now. It actually has something new on it. It has some DNA of interest, let's say that insulin gene. So we're going to reinsert our um, RDNA, our recombinant DNA, um, into the bacteria, like E. coli. We're going to reinsert it into E. coli. And because it's non-essential genes and small number of genes here, E. coli is not going to really care. It's just going to see this and be like, oh, seems like something's back. Okay, cool. I'm just going to move on with my life. Nothing crazy here. Um, so once we have reinserted it, we now actually would be considered a recombinant bacterium because now we have a recombinant DNA within the bacteria, so we call it a recombinant bacterium. And then finally, what we do is, uh, so this is step five. It looks like a six, but this is step five. And then we do step six. Step six is the final cloning, the real cloning step. In step six, we have tons and tons of replication. Bacteria, if there's one thing that they're good at, it's constant replication over and over and over again. So we'll state that the bacteria divides rapidly. 
It, it's put on an auger plate and it divides over and over and over again. And it divides rapidly so much so that many identical, why identical? This is all about DNA cloning. Many identical, um, we'll say, better word would be to insert here, genetically identical, let's say, I forgot to say that. Genetically identical cells will be replicating over and over and over again. Thus, if you have many of these identical cells over and over and over again, you thus have many, many, many copies of our intended uh, recombinant DNA. Our recombinant DNA, our DNA, so many copies of recombinant DNA, will also be within their genome. Within genome. Because look, just because this is this has been reinserted means that the E. coli is going to say, oh, okay, some recombinant DNA. Don't really care. I'm just going to continue my life and continue replicating because I'm just a bacteria. And it's going to just sort of hitchhike its way onto copying over and over and over again as this is dividing rapidly. And if it's dividing rapidly, it's replicating rapidly, and thus it's um, multiplying its genes rapidly. So we have these many copies happening over and over again. Thus, we have created and produced, so we'll say produced multiple identical, cop identical copies of single gene, multiple identical copies of, let's say, in, uh, desired gene. Desired gene, I think, is a better word here, of desired gene. This was insulin. We've made now, let's say, we started off as one bacteria cell. Well, that one bacteria cell will exponentially grow to about a million, let's say. That means we've gone from one gene of insulin to one million genes of insulin, and this is exactly what we mean, last step over here, by gene cloning. This is exactly what gene cloning is all about. In the next video, we'll con conclude our discussion on gene cloning by stating, well, what do we do with this afterwards? Um, hopefully, you understand how encompassing this process is. It is a unique and specific process that is absolutely wonderful in getting a, a foreign piece of DNA that you really, really want, like insulin, and multiplying it over and over and over again. Please, please watch playlist and look at your textbook for figures for more information.